Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Nicholas Essenplayer. Thank you for tuning into my webinar today about low back pain. And I'm going to debunk four myths about low back pain and things that I've been hearing or have heard from patients tell me throughout my three years of treating. I am the owner of Achieve Physical Therapy in Wayne, New Jersey. And I'm going to just talk about some low back pain stuff and hopefully you get uh, take away something good from today's lecture. So we're going to debunk, like I said, four myths about uh, low back pain. That's what we're going to talk about today. That's what I'm going to focus on. So real quick, I just want to run into the lumbar spine and the low back, just some structures so we're all on the same page and you have a better understanding of things I'm saying and you kind of can all follow along. So I want to discuss the three main structures we talk about are the vertebrae, intervertebral discs, and nerves. So the vertebrae are the joints themselves, which are these guys right here. They're the joint itself. That's where all the motion occurs in the spine, in the lumbar spine, thoracic spine, and cervical spine. That's what that is. The intervertebral discs are this, those blue things right here. They are what you hear of when people say I have a herniated disc, a bulging disc. They are the shock absorbers of the body. And what they do is help distribute weight all from your feet all the way down, up to your head and vice versa, down from your head all the way down to your feet. And then lastly, I wanna talk about the nerves. So the nerves are important because if you do have one of those herniated discs or bulging discs, or just in general, if you have back pain, you can get something called radicular symptoms, which that is referred to as radiating pain from the low back. It can go into your glutes, it can go into your foot, it can go into your knee, um, and it kind of radiates all the way down because those nerves, they stretch all the way down to the foot. So the things like sciatica, that's kind of why that happens is because the sciatic nerve, which stems from your low back, stretches all the way down, you kind of get pain down the back of your leg. So those are some things that I wanted to discuss about the nerves. And some important muscles and structures to take into account that I want to discuss about, just so we understand where I'm coming from when I start referring to these things and then the exercises at the end of the video, so we all have the same understanding. So your transverse abdominis is the main one. That's my favorite one. I talk about it all day long with patients. That's the only one that I um, really refer to on a regular basis, it's a very important muscle. It is the low back brace of the lumbar spine. So you see people with the back braces, the weightlifting belts, putting back braces on before they do yard work, things like that. Those are all great and stuff like that, but your body has its own internal one and that's your transverse abdominis. We wanna make sure that is firing correctly and we know how to engage that when we do things so we can reduce the recurrence of low back pain. Your rectus abdominis is that big muscle right there. That's the muscle that a lot of people know as their six pack, stuff like that, the beach muscle. Very strong muscle, it's part of your core. It uh, helps control reaching down, touching your toes, things like that. It's an important muscle. It helps, like I said, control stability of your lumbar spine. And that's the most superficial one that most people see. You have your multifidi or multifidus, that would be one. You have multiple of them from each level, from L1 through L5, actually all the levels, but we're gonna focus on the lumbar spine today. And I like it because your multifidi stabilizes the spine with rotation and certain motions that we do throughout the body. And it's a very important muscle to know how to contract and work on. You have your obliques as well. Those are the outer side muscles right around here. So if you're a golfer, um, or do any rotational exercise, that is, those are the muscles that are working. It gets a lot of your power from those muscles. Once again, it is another component of the core and the stronger it is, the more stable your spine will be. Um, your glute max, it's not really a core exercise, we'll say, but I like to consider it one because it is a huge component of low back pain and you need strong glutes because your glutes are these big muscles, your butt muscles. They connect to this thing called your thoracolumbar fascia, which is this. This is that white sheath all over here, and they connect to that. So now if your glutes are strong and stable, when you're moving furniture, when you're lifting things, you get a kind of like a suction effect. But what that does is create a compressive force along the lumbar spine, because this is the back of your body, um, and it allows for more stability of the lumbar spine. So in theory, we want our glutes to be nice and strong, be able to engage them so that we have 
the thoracolumbar fascia is nice and tight and can hold stability throughout. So myth one, I do plenty of sit-ups and planks. I have a strong core. Sit-ups work mainly to strengthen your rectus abdominis. Your rectus abdominis strength may not be the actual issue. Planks work all aspects of your core, but make sure your form is good or perfect. So the thing with the sit-ups are they are a wonderful exercise, but you have to be sure before you're doing them that you are able to engage your transverse abdominis correctly and then start the sit-up because that superficial muscle is great. It stabilizes the spine, but your transverse abdominis is what really is the deepest part of the muscle that stabilizes your low back. And you want that to fire first before you do sit-ups. So yes, your rectus abdominis can be very strong. You could probably do a hundred sit-ups, but that does not mean that you won't have low back pain at some point. Or if you do a, th a thousand sit-ups a day and you still have low back pain, it could be because of your transverse abdominis. Planks, wonderful exercise. I love them. It's a great stability exercise, endurance exercise. But like I said, you want to make sure your form is really good with that, where you're pulling that belly button into your spine, which is helping the transverse abdominis contract. And that will help um, the, all of your form with that. And like I said, oftentimes the problem lies in our ability to contract our transverse abdominis. So this video is going to show you how to contract your transverse abdominis. I'm going to narrate it because I don't think you'll be able to hear the video. So the transverse abdominis contraction involves pulling your belly button towards your spine and flatten your back against the table or ground. So you'll see. Here's your stomach, her belly button. And it's going flat towards your spine down that way. You don't want to see your hips move at all. They should stay nice and stable. So yes, you don't want to see those hips move back when you're pulling your belly button down and stable and flattening against the low back. It's just straight down and doing that. You hold it for 10 seconds, about 20 times, and make sure to bleed while you're doing it. The next myth I like to talk about is modalities of massage will get rid of my low back pain. Modalities are things like heat, ice, electrical stim, and massages, like, you know, a massage, you go to a massage envy or a masseuse and you get a massage. Though, don't get me wrong, those can help your low back pain, but they may not address the underlying issue. So yes, if you were lifting something, your back's really stiff or sore, and you put some ice on it, you feel great. That's awesome. Same with the massage. You go get a massage, you feel great afterwards. That's perfect. But if you're noticing there's a recurrence of your low back pain, it's happening more often than not. Maybe there's an underlying issue with one of the muscles or the joint is not moving well, things like that, which is why your back pain keeps happening. So these things are great. They can help you, um, but it's not the end all be all. It's not going to fix everything for you. It's going to dissipate the pain for a little bit. And then if you notice that you are getting continued low back pain, it's happening more often. Um, once every few weeks, stuff like that, you may have an underlying issue that needs to be addressed and looked at. So these things are great. I love massages. I like putting heat on my back every so often, but it may be addressed. You may want to address the underlying issue if you're noting a recurrence of low back pain happening more often than not. If I lay down and rest, uh, my low back pain will go away. So real quick, a nice little fun fact. Um, about 80% of the population, if they have low back pain, they'll have minor low back pain. And if they have that, in about six weeks, their symptoms will absolve themselves about 90%. So that being said, like, yes, if you do nothing, in theory, your back pain will go away. Um, but there are ways to stop it from recurring so much, or there are ways to make it decrease quicker than six weeks and stuff like that. And that's through exercise. Um, you should do exercise to help decrease the symptoms that you are feeling. Now, I'm not saying go out and run 10 miles, um, go for a nice long walk, things like that. But I am saying you should do some type of aerobic exercise. It could be walking for a little bit, half a mile, a mile, nothing crazy, nothing too long, and really focus on diaphragmatic breathing, which is the slow breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Really focus on that belly breathing, they call it, or diaphragmatic breathing. That will help decrease your acute low back pain, which is low back pain that just happened pretty recently. Like if you lifted something and twisted and you felt like a catch in your back, that's what will help that. And then as that gets better, you can advance to more harder exercises like the transverse abdominis one I showed or the ones that I will show you later on in this video. And that will help decrease the symptoms you're feeling and decrease the recurrence of low back pain um, and how often it happens for you. And the last myth is I have a herniated disc and that's what's causing my pain. So this is a normal disc. Degenerative disc is like just a little decreased space there. Bulging disc, a lot of people have those and herniated disc as well. Some people may have those. So 
just real quick of what each one is. Um, many sim people have disc herniations, but they don't know they have uh, they don't have a symptoms associated with that. And pretty much, study some studies have shown that 39% have disc herniations that are experience minor minor pain, and 24% of people have disc bulges or herniated disc and have no pain at all. So I'm not saying we don't need imaging. This is a picture I found off Google. Um, I don't know this person personally, but you can see the herniated disc right here is pressing on the nerves. So this person may be experiencing that ridiculous symptoms down the leg that I talked about earlier, but I'm not entirely sure because I don't know them. What I'm saying though is don't let the imaging, an MRI, an x-ray be the end all be all for you. It is a piece of the puzzle, but it's not everything. Because at the end of the day, when people come to see me, we'll say, I don't, if they have imaging, great. But if they don't, I'm not gonna treat like, they have a herniated disc or not, I'm gonna treat based on how the body moves and how it feels and what hurts them and what doesn't hurt them and things like that. So the reason I'm saying that is just don't, don't focus on the herniated disc. Don't let your body think or your brain connect. I have a herniated disc, so I'll always have low back pain. That's not true. People have herniated discs, they have gotten better. I've seen many people with um, low back pain that have gotten much better. Even if they had a herniated disc, the ridiculous symptoms went away. Um, the other thing is you'll have people that have excruciated low back pain that's debilitating and they'll get imaging done and it's perfectly fine. It could be a muscle issue. It could be something with the muscles. It could be the way the joint's moving, things like that. So my main thing is imaging is good. Just don't let it be the end all be all for you deciding if you have pain or not. Really know that, okay, I have a herniated disc, but can I move? Can I walk? Can I do these things? Don't let it, don't, don't think that just because you have a herniated disc um, you're going to have back pain forever because that's not entirely true. And then here are some four exercises to improve your core strength and lumbar spine mobility and stability. So transverse abdominis contraction, this is that first video that we, I showed you, but we'll go over it again. So there's her belly button. And she's gonna flatten her back against the table and pull that belly button down. You're gonna hold it for 10 seconds and do it 20 times. Really focus on breathing while you do it. And you don't wanna make sure when you're pulling your belly down, those hips rotate back. You don't want that, that's not good. You want just no hip movement and the belly button going down and back getting flat. The next exercise we'll talk about is what is known as the knee fallout exercise. Um, this will stem from the transverse abdominis contraction. We're always gonna start there. Kind of like when I said with sit-ups, you can do sit-ups, but you wanna make sure your TA is contracting first. So if you're strong in the center, we can move our extremities better. And that's why this exercise will focus on being strong in the center and moving an extremity. So you see she braces her stomach down. And then she's gonna let one knee fall out towards the side, nice and slow and controlled, and then bring it back in, and then go to the other side. Now what you wanna do with this one is don't move too far, go as far as you can control, keeping your back flat against the ground or table that you're working on, keeping that belly button drawn in. You don't want to move too far out. If you get a little bit out, no big deal. If you get a lot out, great, that means you have very good control. Just make sure that you're doing it, you're not holding your breath, and, that you do 10 each side for this exercise, but always start with that um, TA contraction. You may notice one side will be easier than the other. That's okay, maybe that meant that there's an underlying issue there. For me, my left side's a little bit tougher to control than my right, and so I've been working on that. All right, we have two more exercises. So this is the heel side exercise, a variation, uh, a buildup of the TA contraction that I was talking about. So you'll see her brace her belly button down towards her spine, fly on her back. And then she's gonna slide one of her legs out while, control, while holding that and then bring it back up. She's gonna do 10 each leg. And 
what you want to focus on with this one is only go as far as you control the center, just like the last exercise, only go as far as you can keep that back flat against the ground. So she's pretty good at this. We've been practicing this so she can go all the way out pretty far, but you may only get to here, here, or you may be able to go all the way out. The main thing is you want that back nice and flat and that belly button drawn in while you're breathing and performing those 10 repetitions. It's not about the motion, it's about the quality. So if you can't go really far out, it's okay, as long as you get good quality motion in the beginning. So it's not about the range. I said the quality earlier. It's not about the range, it's about the quality and even if it's a little bit of motion. And lastly is a bridging exercise, which many people have done, but this will help focus on that glute max I was talking about that collect, connects to that thoracolumbar lumbar fascia. So we're gonna start with that TA contraction. You'll see her pull her hands down towards, her hands will go down towards her uh, back, flatten against the table. And then she's gonna lift her glutes up off the ground or table and bring them back down. Nice and controlled, nice and slow. You don't wanna lift up super high where your glutes are trying to get as high as possible. It's a nice controlled motion. Just get a little lift off and bring them back down. You're gonna do 20 of these or two sets of 10 and that will help with your glute strength and controlling your body throughout movements. So that was my quick little webinar on four little myths of low back pain or things I've heard patients say that I wanted to address. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at nsmplayer at achievephysicaltherapy.com. Visit my website at achievepTnj.com. Um, feel free to email me with any questions, whether it's about your back, your shoulder, it doesn't matter, just you can answer me. Uh, please give me feedback. If you like this webinar, please let me know. Um, you can email me some feedback and please, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out. This webinar is not meant to substitute for any PT treatment that you may have been getting or have gotten or are getting in this moment. It's not meant to substitute medical advice. It's educational purposes and trying to give you some ideas of what you can do to help your low back. But please, if you really do have low back pain and things like that, please reach out to me or another physical therapist or your doctor or trained professional to get a real understanding of what that may be going on. And if you have any pain while doing these exercises, stop right away, please. And have a good day. Thank you for tuning in, like I said, and please give me, um, give me some feedback. I would love to hear what everyone thinks about this webinar.